Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this. Now this is the British Army's 1962 pattern poncho. This precedes the lightweight poncho, the nylon, uh, the lightweight nylon poncho, which was introduced in the early 1970s and is basically the interim design between that and the preceding 1944 pattern poncho, which it, it's something of an improvement on. We're going to look at the details of this in the video, talk about obviously it wasn't really worn very much, uh, not a huge amount of evidence of it being used as a poncho, but I thought this was the best way of displaying it to talk about the various features, and that's what we're going to get into in the video. A little bit of sort of background information, uh, obviously a lot of people consider the nylon poncho, the lightweight nylon poncho, to be a 1958 pattern poncho, which it, it, it's very commonly associated with the 1958 pattern web equipment. Of course, it's not 1958 pattern. It wasn't introduced until the early 1970s when a range of improved kit was introduced. As I say, up to that point, this is one of the things which was issued with and used with 1958 pattern. But the actual component designed to carry, well, that was used to carry the poncho, the cape carrier, as it's officially called, colloquially called the poncho roll, quite commonly, is referred to as a cape carrier. So I'm unclear if earlier it was to be used to carry the 1944 pattern poncho, or if the intention was that it would actually be used to carry the Mark VII ground sheet or ground sheet cape, which was still around at the time of 1958 pattern's introduction. Anyway, during the 1960s, during the mid to, to late 1960s, this is what would be carried in that cape carrier or poncho roll, the 1962 pattern. These would also be used out in the Far East, obviously the, the Indonesia confrontation, uh, um, Borneo was ongoing at the time, the Malaysia-Indonesia confrontation, and these were used, uh, they, were, they were introduced, as I say, in 1962, and they were used during that middle part of the 1960s. They were certainly used out in the Far East at this time as well. And as I say, gradually replaced by the nylon poncho, the lightweight nylon poncho, beginning in the early 1970s. The overall design is very similar to the later nylon poncho, so you'll see that as we look at this. Obviously, it's just made in a, a somewhat different material, a sort of rubberized uh, fabric. Oh, it's a lot heavier weight than the nylon, the lightweight nylon version, which obviously that was the reason for introducing that was to reduce the weight. At the top here, we have a hood, and this is an advance on the 1944 pattern poncho, which didn't include a hood. So we have the hood there, draw cord at the front here. You can see metal eyelets. It's quite well constructed, this, with the draw cord running around the rim of the hood there, just with a wooden toggle through which the cords are a tight fit, so you can use that to tighten the cords up. There's no push button or anything there, that's just a simple wooden toggle, and that works quite effectively. Just uh, dope on the ends of the uh, the cords here to stop them from fraying, been doped there. And we'll see, probably show you this now rather than when we turn this around, have a look at the, uh, the back and everything. You can see here on the sides of the hood, we have a flap. If I get my fill underneath there, you can see that's sewn on separately. And inside there is a, an eyelet worked in. And I believe this is so you can run uh, cables in for a headset, potentially. Uh, but there is that design feature on the side. You do have that on both sides, obviously, where the ears would be if this was worn with the hood up. Very, very plain on the outside. Otherwise, the, the main point of interest is actually around the edge. And at front and rear, you can see this actually comes out to a point. It's not a straight edge. I have a large heavyweight eyelet in the center there, which obviously means this can be used as a tent, essentially, or as a shelter. And then you have one at each corner, there and there. And then along the sides, in the center, you have another eyelet, but you have a series of press studs or snaps. And you can see the male set of those there. And then on the other side of the center eyelet, we have female, and the same on the other side so these can be snapped together to make a larger shelter. If you have more than one or men grouping together to build a shelter, you can attach these together using these snaps. And you can see that on the inside face, you have the opposite side. So on the side where you have female press studs on the outside, there are male on the inside. And likewise on the other side, female down the inside where we have male on the outside. So. Quite a neat feature of the design in being able to attach these together. We'll spin this round now and have a look at the back. Looking at the back here, I'll lift up here, you can see the construction of the hood with a single seam running up the top there. 
Otherwise very plain at the back here. You can see again we have the, the centre eyelet there with a slight uh, pitch, I say, to the end of the, the edge of the poncho there. It comes to a point in the centre there. Eyelets at both corners there, as you can see. So again, it's a mirror of the front in that regard, the way it's set up with the, uh, the press studs and the eyelets around the edge. We'll turn this inside out now and have a look at the, the inside details. Okay, so with this turned inside out, we can see various details of the construction here. We can see how the hood is attached with a, a seam, glued seam, glued and stitched seam around the, the top there with extra reinforcement over the shoulders there to make sure this is a waterproof join. On this, we have the stamp here, Poncho 1962 pattern, GS and S Limited 1965. Looking down here, we have a draw cord running across the waist here, which means that the poncho can be secured around the body. Uh, and you can see that runs in a short channel glued in, glued and stitched in across the center of the body there. Metal eyelets, and then this long draw cord, which as with the draw cord in the hood, just has doped ends on the cord there. You can see the seams down the side here, which are again, stitched, taped and glued to keep them waterproof. And you can see that around the, the bottom edge there, it's doubled over to give a, a reinforced section for the eyelets and at the sides for a reinforced section for the press studs to be fitted to. Turn this around now and have a look at the back. Looking at the back here, there isn't a huge amount more to see, but if we lift the hood up here, you can again see the construction of this. The tape over the seam there, just to keep that waterproof, you can see the inside detail of the eyelets on each side there. And then again, this seam around the back here, stitched and taped to make sure that stays waterproof where the hood attaches onto the poncho. You can also see slightly better detail here of the side seams where they've been stitched and then taped and glued again for waterproofing. So there we are, that's the inside of the poncho. So there we are, that's an overview of the British Army's 1962 pattern poncho, as I say, the ancestor of the more common nylon lightweight poncho that people are probably very familiar with. A, a nice bit of kit uh, and definitely in advance on the 1944 pattern. I hope you found it interesting looking at this and, and looking at the details and so forth of it. If you have and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, then please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell with the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And a massive thank you, as ever, to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch, but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.